Today we're going to cook a seafood paella and let me go through the ingredients that we're going to need. First, um, for the seafood, I'm using mussels, about two pounds of mussels. A lot of that is for the broth, a few of them is to actually put in the paella. And then we're going to use clams. I use cockle clams or any small clam I can find. Shrimp, I'd say for a paella for four people, maybe 12 to 16 shrimp is plenty. We're going to need garlic and tomato and uh, onion for the sofrito. You want basically twice as much tomato as you have onion. So since I have a small onion and a large tomato, that'll be good. Two lemons, three lemons. The more lemon, the better. We're of course gonna need rice. This is bomba rice, which is the best for paella. If you can't find bomba, another Spanish rice is fine. About one and a quarter cups of rice for four people. Clam juice to boost up our seafood broth. And about a pinch of saffron, maybe 25 threads and olive oil. So the first thing I'm going to do, because it takes the longest, is to make the sofrito. And for that, we take a tomato, you just cut it in half, and you grate it on the side of a box grater. And it's a great technique because it goes right down to the skin, so when you're done, you end up with the pulp down here. and produces just the right texture of puree. For the onion, we do the same thing. So it grates the onion into a perfect puree. So now we're going to start cooking the sofrito. I start with the onion in the pan. Add a little bit of oil, not too much, maybe a tablespoon. Season the onion with a little bit of salt. I season as I go. I add a bit of salt each time I add something to the pan. So the onion has been cooking for a couple of minutes and I'm ready to add the pureed tomato. I'm on medium heat right now. I don't want anything to get brown. This isn't about browning, it's just about softening up and sweetening the ingredients. So now I'm gonna turn it up to medium high just for a few minutes, and I'll bring it back down again. And of course I'm gonna season the tomato. So a little bit of salt. I like to use fine sea salt. When you first start cooking the sofrito, it's very light. Um, there's The tomato is very light. It's going to get darker. And one of the key indicators that the sofrito is done is that it's gotten very dark. The minimum amount of time for a sofrito to cook is 20-25 minutes, but really 40 to 45 minutes is ideal. And if you can go even longer, better. So the sofrito has been cooking for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes now, and there's some sticking going on right here. So I want to show you that is not bad, but we don't want too much of it. So I add a little bit of liquid and rub it off and it becomes part of the sofrito. It's called deglazing and um, that's how you handle the sofrito sticking. So the sofrito is going and now I'm going to add the garlic. So now I have several cloves of garlic. I'm just going to add them to the sofrito. Okay, so I've got my mussels set aside for the paella, and the rest of them are going into the pot. It's just going to be five or ten minutes, enough time for the mussels to open up. Now, while the mussels are cooking, I'm going to toast the saffron, and I'm going to take advantage of the heat coming off of the lid of the pot of mussels to do that. So I'm going to take a pinch of saffron, this is saffron from Spain. You don't want to use too much saffron. You just want enough to give it a gentle bit of color and aroma. Now I'm going to wrap it up into this foil, into a little packet. And now I'm going to put it on top of the lid. So the saffron has been heated on the lid of the broth or else in your dry skillet, even in a toaster oven, but only for about two minutes, not too long because it will burn. And now we're going to open up the little foil packet and um, pulverize the saffron into a powder. So let's see what we've got here. Perfect. It's a little bit darker than it was, but not much. If it's black, you've messed up. And you have to start again. So I'm putting it into a little um, mortar and I'm just going to crunch it up with this pestle into a powder. If you don't have a mortar and pestle, just use a, a mug and a spoon, that's fine. And you see how nicely it becomes a powder there? That's 
because it's been heated and so it's been dried out a bit and it just crumbles nicely. Mussels have been cooking, they're open. We have a nice looking broth, so I'm going to strain the broth into a colander with a bowl underneath, of course. So now I'm going to make the rest of the saffron broth. So here is the powdered saffron. And now I'm going to take a little bit of the muscle broth. Pour it in here. And now we have a little saffron flavored muscle broth. And that needs to sit for at least 15 or 20 minutes to let the saffron flavor infuse the liquid. Now I'm going to finish making the broth. I'm going to add the muscle broth carefully into a pot. I don't need all of this. I'm going to pour about four or five cups in there. For a cup of rice or a cup and a quarter of rice, I'm going to need about three times as much liquid, but I always add a little bit of extra just in case. And then the saffron broth, which has been steeping for about 15 or 20 minutes now, I'm adding that in as well. And then the final step is to add the clam juice, the last boost of flavor. So there we have our seafood broth. And you really need it to be well salted. It should taste as salted as a really good soup. So the sofrito has been cooking for maybe 45 minutes. And see how dark it has gotten? It's really a nice, a beautiful burnt reddish brownish color. So one and a quarter cups of rice for four people, that means about one quarter cup of dry rice per person. Sometimes I go to a third of a cup per person because if the paella comes out really well, everybody's just going after the rice. We're ready to put the paella together. Now, before I do that, I will just say that everything I've done up until this point can be done ahead of time. This part, from now on, has to be done uh, before when you're ready to eat. I'm going to add the rice into the pan, stir the rice around, mix it in with the sofrito so that it's coated, and it's just going to cook in here for a couple of minutes while the rice is toasting, I'm going to measure out the broth. There's four cups of broth. I'm not going to add it all. Um, I'm going to add one and a quarter times three is three and three quarter cups. So I'm going to add almost all of it. So now the rice has been toasting for a little bit and I'm going to add in the broth. And I'm going to turn the heat up to high to bring it all up to a boil. Now, right now, I'm spreading the rice out. I can't see what's going on under there, but I'm just sort of feeling around, trying to spread it out as evenly as I can. We're going to let it boil at a brisk simmer for about 10 minutes. Now, the, the shrimp, I'm going to salt them because they taste a little bit better when they've been salted in advance. So the water has come to a boil. It's coming all the way to the edge. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. I don't want it to be ferociously boiling because then all the liquid will boil away. I want it to be a strong simmer. Okay, the paella has been cooking for about 10 minutes and you can see that the rice is starting to pop up and be at the same level as the liquid. And that is our indication that it's time to turn the heat down to medium or medium low because we want to slow down the cooking. Make it go another 10 minutes. The rice needs at least 18 to 20 minutes to cook and get uh, to cook through and become tender. As you can see, the liquid is the broth is still boiling. It's still bubbling. It's just a lot slower. This is the only really tricky part about cooking paella is you want to it is the timing part. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer, especially if you're not getting heat all the way to the edge of the pan. Then you have to move the pan around a little bit. But um, it's something that you get better at with practice. Now that I've turned down the liquid and it's been cooking for 10 minutes, it's okay to put my clams and mussels in. Now, these little clams, they open up pretty quickly, so that's why I've waited so long. But if I was using a larger clam with a thicker shell, I would put it in more towards the beginning because sometimes they take forever to open. And I sort of push them in, nestle them in there, and the same with the mussels, which also open up usually pretty quickly. 
One thing you don't want to do with paella is overwhelm the rice with too many ingredients. Always remember that paella is about the rice. The other things in the pan are they're really only there to flavor the rice. And you know you've made a really good paella when people are pushing away the other ingredients in the pan and just trying to get another bite of rice. The clams are already starting to open and it's only been about a minute or two in the pan. We are almost there. The paella has been cooking for maybe um, 16, 17 minutes at this point. A lot of the clams and mussels have started to open. We still have a little ways to go. But what's happening is, you hear that crackling sound. That is the sound of the bottom layer of rice starting to get a little bit toasty, which is a good thing. That's called sokorat. You can tell if you're getting sokorat by putting a spoon in, and if you feel a little bit of resistance on the bottom of the pan, that means I'm getting sokorat. I'm gonna taste the rice and see how close we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one or two minutes and we're there. I still want there to be a little bit of bite because the paella is going to rest for five or ten minutes before we eat it and the rice is going to keep cooking a little bit. But I am going to put the shrimp in because I think we're close enough. The shrimp only need two minutes, three minutes tops. Okay, the, uh, the shrimp are almost there. There's a few little mussels that are not open, so I'm going to give it a little bit of uh, extra steam by just putting a lid on top of it. Okay, so this has been about two minutes with the lid on, and the shrimp are done, the shellfish are open. The last step is to really make sure we've got that sokora. So the sokora is the caramelized bit of rice on the bottom of the pan. I can feel that I have some in the center, but I want to make sure I have enough. So I'm turning the heat up to medium high and I'm going to I'm going to rotate the pan around. Usually the edges are the ones that don't get the soaker rod. I can feel I don't have any. So you can hear it crackling. And you just give it a little bit around the edges, turning the pan. Now I'm going to let it rest off the heat for five or ten minutes. I like to leave it with a, um, a cover on top. Make sure all your burners are off when you put a towel on top of the pan. I'm just going to let it sit for five minutes that way. And this is just sort of a resting time for the rice. I like to say that the rice grains need to uh, get to know each other a little bit. Okay, I think we're ready to eat some paella. It's been resting for about five minutes. The rice is in a thin layer. These are here the rivets of the pan. The rice is below the rivets of the pan by a fair amount. We're talking about maybe a half inch of rice at most. The best paellas are the thinnest layer paellas. The color of the rice is a, a, a soft yellowish brownish color. It's not this bright orangey yellow color. This is actually what you get when you're in Spain at a really authentic Spanish paella restaurant, the rice is not going to look any more um, yellow than this. So now I'm going to garnish the paella with some lemon wedges. Lemon is an essential part of any paella, especially a seafood paella. You really need a lot of lemon to uh, brighten it up. Now the correct way to serve the paella is to put it on, put the pan on the table. Ideally it's a round table and everybody gathers around and sits down and finds a seat in front of the pan. Um, taking a spatula and serving the paella onto a plate, maybe that's okay if you're in a more formal setting or um, you don't have a round table, but definitely the paella tastes best when you eat it right out of the paella pan. I take my lemon and I ask the person to decide, do you like lemon? Oh, yes you do. Do you like lemon? No, you don't like lemon. Okay, so I'm going to squeeze the lemon on my section, being careful not to get it on this side because this person didn't like it, this person was okay, so we squeeze it on and we get our lemon going. Okay, here we go. Now that is sokora. That's what it's all about. Perfect. Delicious. Delicioso. Now, I hope you've learned a lot with this video. We'll be back someday with more, we hope. Um, and don't forget, get all of your supplies at paellapans.com. Call me if you have any questions. Thank you.